Hey everybody, I'm Root of the Null, and I'm going to be teaching you about the RE module in Python, and ultimately, regular expressions. Now, to get the ball rolling, I've gone ahead and googled what regular expressions really are. And the first thing that was returned to me was that a regular expression is a sequence of characters that forms a search pattern, mainly for use in patterns matching with strings or string matching, like a find replace operation or just a simple find operation. Now it's funny that the next thing that was immediately returned to me was the documentation for the RE module in Python. And Python is typically the language that I like to work with, so I figured I would go ahead and take it a look. Now, regular expressions are awesome. If you are uh, a power user, you should know regular expressions. If you're a programmer, you should know regular expression. And if, if you're just kind of any individual that uses a computer, it's kind of a good idea to learn what regular expressions are and how to take advantage of them because they can make your life so much easier. So if you want to learn anything new, the first thing you should do is look at the documentation. So I've gone ahead and clicked this link and I've got it ready to rock the RE documentation for the Python language. I'm using version um, 2.76 or whatever I have for Python right now, but this is the RE documentation. Uh, you can find it all online, you can save a copy on your computer, but reading onwards, it says that a regular expression, or RE, we also hear the term regex every now and again, and it specifies a set of strings that matches it. The functions in this module let you check if a particular string matches a given regular expression, or if a given regular expression matches a particular string, which ultimately comes down to the same thing. So, regular expressions are really, really cool. But, I'm going to skip over a few things here and get back to my scope and sequence. The idea is that regular expressions can contain both special and ordinary characters. Most ordinary characters, like the letter A, lowercase letter A, or zero, or any other kind of simple character, they're the simplest regular expressions, and they simply match themselves. You can concatenate ordinary characters so last matches the string last. If you were to search for that word, you would find that word. You'll write re's in a in that special style. Okay, that's just um, sort of nomenclature and stuff for the documentation. We don't have to worry about that. But other characters, like the pipe symbol or an opening parentheses, are special characters. And special characters either stand for classes of ordinary characters, or they can affect how the regular expressions around them can be interpreted, how they will work, and how they will ultimately be returned to you, whether or not you find a match. So. All of these things, or at least some of them, use a backslash. And uh, we'll get into that very, very soon. But first, we want to learn all about these special characters and how we can, as programmers and as power users and computer users ultimately, how can we manipulate these special characters and really learn the full flex and muscle of regular expressions. So, us wanting to be able to tinker with it and toy with it, the ultimate thing that we have to do is build a tool that will allow us to play with all of these regular expressions and special characters. What can we do to tinker, to find out what these all do? Well, obviously, let's build something. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and save a new file. I'm going to um, actually move this into code. This will be in Python, by the way. And I will create a new folder for re toy. And I'm just going to go ahead and save this. I know you can't see the file name, but I'll call it retesting.py. Okay. And this is a program, very simple. So let's add our kind of boilerplate, kind of typical stuff that we need to have a program. I'm going to have a main function. I'm going to test if the name is equal to main. Then we can go ahead and uh, run our main function. Right now, let's just print out hello to make sure that we actually exist. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get my terminal ready. You might be able to see that I was playing with some code earlier. Re toy. Uh, I want to get into Python. Python. Okay. I'm going to make this program executable. And then let's run it. Okay. No, we just simply say hello. Cool. So, back to the actual program. The point of what we're designing is to be able to play with regular expressions. So, we're going to need the module. Duh. Import 
RE. And as you guys know, RE is a module that contains all of the regular expressions and regex that we'll be working with in Python. It's Python's module. Now, just to make things a little bit easier on our eyes and to actually know what it is that we're looking at, I'm going to be using Colorama. Now, I've created a tutorial series on the module Colorama, and uh, you can download the module, uh, I think, online and do all fun and fancy things with it. I've got a whole series on it. But for now, we're just going to use it as a way to see what our regular expressions are returning and that sort of thing. But let's go ahead and import them. From Colorama, I'm going to import the four kind of object as foreground. And I'm going to do the same thing with the background. Okay, simple, simple stuff. And now let's actually go ahead and start to use regular expressions. Regular expressions match with a specific pattern, and that's what I'm going to call our variable. And obviously it's matching what it finds in a string, so that's what we'll call the other variable. Let's go back to our documentation and read a bit more about it. I'm going to scroll up to the top here. And this is what I was getting at earlier. Regular expressions use the backslash character to indicate special forms or to allow special characters to be used without invoking their special meaning. This, this kind of collides with Python's usage of the same character for the same purpose in string literals. So, if you wanted to use backslashes, you might have to write like four backslashes as a pattern string because a regular expression must be backslash backslash. And I'm kind of falling over the words here, but each backslash, <laughs> I did it again, must be expressed as two double backslashes, I'm sorry, double backslashes, inside of a regular Python string literal. And even just speaking it, I'm sure you can hear that this can get confusing. So, the obvious solution is to use Python's raw string notation for regular expression patterns. I don't know if you've ever seen this before, maybe not in my videos, but the way that it works is you just have prefix r right in front of your string. Let's do this in our code. The pattern can be r and then the quotation marks that represent a string. Okay, awesome. Now, let's say the pattern can be, oh, let's see, what's a... What are some special characters? The dot, we'll just quickly learn that default mode, this matches any character except a new line. Okay, um, dot, let's just throw that in there. And um, the asterisk causes the resulting RE to match zero or more repetitions of the preceding regular expression, as many repetitions as possible. Okay, that's really, really simple. So, at least just kind of quickly throwing this at you, this will return anything and as many of it can of it. So essentially it will return the entire string of what we have. So let's set up the string. Uh, let's say this is a joke, right? Or anything silly. The string can be just about anything, but currently, right now, this regular expression will return everything because of the pattern. Now the way that things work in the regular expression module is that they will return things as match objects. And I'll scroll all the way down here so we can find out what those are. But, regular expression objects. Um, here, we're going to be looking at the search function anyway, so it's good that we can actually we can actually take a look at this. It'll scan through the string. Okay, this is just for the regular expression object. Let's get down to the match object. I'm actually just going to go ahead and use the typical search function. Okay. Search function is what we're going to actually be using initially to find matches with regular expressions. So in the documentation, this is going to be the first thing that we'll look at. It'll scan through a string, any variable that we pass to it. In this case, very obviously, it'll just be string, which translates to this. It'll look for a location where the regular expression or pattern, that variable, the first thing that we pass to it, which in this case is the pattern, translates to this produces a match, and it will return a corresponding match object instance. It will return none if there is no position in the string that matches the pattern. Okay, so that means we can kind of break this down into a matched object. So match object will be something if it did find a match, and otherwise it will not be anything. So we can use the RE module and search Remember, we're using the pattern first and then the string. And that's exactly what we're going to be looking at. If we find something, then we've got a match. If we don't, there was no match. So let's actually translate this to an if statement. If matched, 
Because remember, if matched exists, if it's not none, then we can go ahead and print the string. And this is where I'm going to use some string slicing, so we can actually get exactly what we found to be highlighted. So we can use Colorama to see what it is that we're finding, rather than what haven't we found. So we're going to start from the very beginning of the string. I'm going to use the colon to go up, up until the start of the match. And the match object has some really kind of special properties and functions and variables. This function, the search function, will return a corresponding match object instance. So let's check out the match object. And there are a few functions that we're going to learn pretty quickly, just so we can see how we can set this up all on our own. And those are the start and end functions. And these will return the indexes of the start and end of the substring that is matched by what we find, or the group. We'll get into groups very, very soon, but for now, let's just look at um, start and end as, as simple functions. They'll return where the pattern that we found starts and the pattern that we found ends. So we can say match.start. Awesome. And now this will go up until we found the match. Now let's go ahead and add some highlighting. And you guys know that we imported Colorama. So what will we go ahead and do here? Can you guys figure it out? Let's use a background color. I'm going to use blue in this case, and I'm going to add on to that the string. And I might actually, I might need to kind of move on here. I use a uh, backslash to just get down to the new line. String matched.start up till match.end. So the match that we find will be highlighted with a blue background. Super duper cool, right? And let's add on to that the rest of the string after we s reset the background. String matched end to the very end because of the colon that we're using here. String splicing will come in, in great handy for us. And then we'll add an else statement. So if we do not find a match, we can go ahead and print with a foreground color this time. I'm going to use red, that there was no match found. And then we'll go back to plain and simple nothing. Okay. Cool. So now let's go to our terminal and kind of test this out. I'm going to head over to the terminal, clear the screen, see what we got here, re testing. Well, let's run re testing. And now our string, this is a joke, right, is tested with a pattern. The pattern that we've set up is everything, in this case, dot asterisk. It will return any character as many times as it can. So, simply, the entire string is highlighted, because everything will match that, that criteria. What if, we, what if we change this up? What if we just said we wanted the word uh, this, right? We run this. This is the only thing highlighted, because, well, that's exactly what we told it to do. What if we wanted just the uh, letter I? It'll find the letter I. It only finds the first one, though, because regular expressions are processing from a left to right pattern, or at least that, that's the procedure, that's how they work, and then they will return the first thing that they find. They can return multiple instances, but we'll get into that very, very soon. What if we typed in this in lowercase? There was no match found. We didn't find it, because remember, that, that ordinary character, the lowercase t, will match only that. It will match only the lowercase letter, which doesn't return, or there is no lowercase this in any of our string. So it's not going to be able to find it. Okay, does that make sense so far? Let's go back to our code. A lot of you good guys probably have noticed that we're using these variables uh, a lot, or at least we're calling this function a lot. So uh, let's try and stop that. Most of you know we don't have to call this function three times. We can just set a variable that will return exactly what we have here. Start can equal match.start, and end can equal matched.end. And that way we're essentially not calling the function three times, we're calling it once, and we're just reusing the variable's value. The exact same thing will happen in our code, it's just a little bit better. 
Okay. So this is simple. This is really, really easy so far. We just built uh, a really tiny, tiny engine that will just test out a regular expression, right? It just tests out whether or not we find a pattern in a string, and it will display what has been found in that string, whatever it is. So whether or not there is a match or not, it will tell us. Awesome. Really, really simple, kind of small engine and toy to play with regular expressions. And now we'll kind of expand this or work on it a bit more in the next tutorial, but this is pretty simple, just a start to the series. A basic introduction to regular expressions. And that's exactly what I was hoping to go with. Remember to check out your documentation and to kind of question and research a bit more what regular expressions really are and what they can do with you, or what they can do for you, and what you can do with them. <laughs> Alright, cool. Uh, I'm just about done here. Uh, I do want to thank you for watching the video. Uh, it'd be awesome if you could maybe like the video, maybe leave a comment, maybe subscribe. I don't know. That's entirely your doing, but I will stop wasting your time, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.